Could North Korea go to war with the South? Why not? After all, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un recently called for a constitutional change to see the South as a primary foe and has abandoned efforts to reunify the two states. He said he has no intention of avoiding war with South Korea. Pyongyang has ramped up its testing of nuclear-capable ballistic missiles in the last couple of years. Some analysts even think Kim has abandoned detente with the US after a failed 2019 summit in Hanoi. And that this has come with a shift in foreign policy towards Russia and China. So, how do these two sides stack up? South Korea is twice more populous, with 51.6 million people in the north, with 25.6 million citizens. North Korea has 1.3 million active personnel in its armed forces, with 600,000 in reserve. South Korea has more than a half million active personnel, with 3 million in reserve. South Korea has no nuclear weapons. And as a stark contrast to its northerly foe, which has been developing and testing them, and making quite a show of it too. While North Korea has an air force, it pales in comparison to the South Korea's more superior aircraft. And although Pyongyang has more tanks and submarines, its Soviet air equipment are a far cry from Seoul's more sophisticated apparatus. That's why analysts think South Korea may be able to hold their own if they did go to war. What would happen if they did? This all depends on how deeply North Korea infiltrates. Where will movements stall and where will the front lines be? Remember, there are no real natural barriers to Seoul, South Korea's capital, which lies 35 miles away from the DMZ. It's also within distance of those nuclear-capable ballistic missiles we were talking about. There are a lot of mines, though, buried in the forests, a leftover from the Korean War, when South Korea, the US, North Korea, and China all placed mines on the front lines. Also, if the North were to invade, a lot of North Korean soldiers would probably experience the 21st century for the first time. There is no predicting that kind of behavior. That being said, it is worth remembering that North and South Korea are not the only actors in the region. The US, too, has a major stake in the region. The Indo-Pacific region, as of June 2023, hosted 375 American military personnel across 66 defense sites. So, given the number of American personnel there, will the US have no choice but to get involved? And also, how deeply would the US get involved? They could either put boots on the ground or provide air support help with intel. North Korea has long been trying to dissuade US from the region by developing more nuclear weapons. This hasn't gone according to the plan. Washington's military cooperation with Seoul has only strengthened and they have roped another country into their liaison, Japan. The three countries signed a security pact in 2023, and it, along frequent military training, has served as a quite formidable threat for the North Koreans. If the US were to step in, will China and Russia decide to them too? They may be aware of how the US is occupied with other fronts in Ukraine and the Middle East. Maybe they could take advantage of a distracted US. So all this finally leaves us with when. If North Korea were to invade South, when would be a good time? That would be when regional actors are distracted and their resources tied up. So basically, when China invades Taiwan. That of course depends on whether Washington will opt to stand between China and Taiwan in the first place. But that is a story for another episode.